Hello and welcome to Jurassic Reviews. Today we'll be taking a look at another figure from Kenner's Series 2 line. That figure is the Quetzalcoatlus. The Series 2 Quetzalcoatlus was released in 1994 for $14.99, and included a collector's card and capture gear, which I don't have. This figure was unique among toys for the first film, in that it came in a windowless box. Well, unique at least for the dinosaurs and ancient reptiles, so you couldn't actually see the figure inside. I just want to mention that the box art is great on this. You can see it carrying away Dr. Snare, a human figure in the Series 2 line. First, let's take a look at the sculpt. This figure is 11 inches long, and has a wingspan of 19 and a half inches, so it's actually a decently sized figure when the wings are out. The entire figure feels pretty smooth, much like the Gallimimus and Baryonyx, but there's still some good detail here. You can see its ribcage, small veins that run along its wings, legs, and neck, You can also see a small ridge of bumps going down its back, with larger ones that stick out, which is part of the action feature. Looking at the head, this is probably one of the least accurate parts of the figure, and I really think this figure as a whole is probably not a good representation of the animal, but that does not mean it doesn't look really cool. The beak and the crest along its head look awesome and it's probably the most noticeable thing about this figure. So for the most part this figure is made entirely of plastic, except for one major part, its wings, which use cloth. This is an interesting design feature, and no doubt a material used to allow the wings to fold up easily. Though not part of the action feature description on the box, which states that it has an attack beak and talons, the button on the back of the Quetzalcoatlus can cause both wings to flap, and cause the wings to spring out when connected to the body. To connect the wings, you bend them inwards and connect them to an opening on the body. I'm only going to show this for one wing, as there's a little bit of damage on my figure, and I'm going to try to be gentle with it. That's another thing. This figure is incredibly fragile, and finding one in good shape is hard. The nature of the cloth material and the thin plastic along its wings leads to this figure easily being broken. The damage on mine isn't too bad, but I've seen a lot of these with torn wings, so just be careful if you have one. While we are on the subject of action features, if you press the back of the head downwards, it will cause the mouth to open, and releasing it will cause it to snap back down, allowing for some biting action. The other action feature is just more part of the figure's articulation, in that the two talons on each foot can be moved, allowing it to grab things. The joints are pretty loose on mine, so I don't think it can hold anything really well. Looking at the other points of articulation, it's sort of the same story in my figure. Everything is very loose. Both legs can move back and forth, and the neck can be rotated. Moving to the paint, the majority of this figure is painted a dark gray on the top half, and a lighter gray on the bottom. It actually is a pretty nice transition from the dark gray to the lighter gray. It's also worth noting that the JP mark is on this one's leg. Its number is 18. Looking at the wings, they use a light brown colored cloth. This one is actually a variant. I think a lot of these out there use a gray cloth instead. Moving to the head is where this figure's nickname on the box comes into play, which is called Fire Beak which suits it well as it has a bright red beak with a yellow crest on top. There is also a small area of gray, and it has black pupils. Overall, I like this paint job, and the darker colors allow the beak to pop nicely. In a line of figures that's already pretty rare, the Quetzalcoatlus is among the rarest. This, I imagine, is probably because there's not too many that survived, due to them being fragile. 
and partly because it's one of the larger figures in the line. Loose samples tend to sell between $50 and $70, sometimes more depending on how complete it is. If you want one in its box, you're looking in the $150 to $200 range. As always, you can find these for more or less. One thing I want to mention before we go to the comparison is that while this figure was not repainted, it did have a bit of a retool in the Lost World line, where it was used as the giant Pteranodon. I believe everything about that figure was the same except for the head, which was changed. Now let's move to the comparison. Here it is with a Mattel 3 and 3 quarter scale human and a Kenner 4 inch human. Here it is with a Velociraptor. Here it is with the Utah Raptor. And finally, here it is with the Tyrannosaurus Rex. For a rating out of 10, I give this one an 8. It has solid action features and a decent paint job. It's just a shame that it's incredibly fragile. It's a really cool looking toy, one that definitely sticks out when on display. If the costs don't scare you away, and you're not into Mattel's version of this animal, then I say hunt this one down. It's worth it. And that does it for the Kenner Jurassic Park Series 2 Quetzalcoatlus. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.